Here's another problem about the dynamics of circular motion. When I say the dynamics of circular motion, I mean in particular the forces that cause circular motion. This is off of the circular motion practice problems, which are based on the group teaching problems. I'm going to ask myself this question over and over. What forces combine to make this object move in a circle? We need forces toward the center, and you ask yourself, what are the forces toward the center making this object move in a circle. And the way to determine that is to draw a picture. And you're going to draw a picture that you can view the circle. This is a vertical circular loop. And there's a little bit of a clarification that we need to do here for this uh, roller coaster going through for this roller coaster going through a vertical circular loop the clarification that I need to make is that we're talking about the top of the loop so I'm gonna add that in really quick I'm saying at the top at the top of the loop so I'm gonna draw the forces on the loop now this may seem counterintuitive to some of you because you may want to start looking at these numbers and thinking about what you're going to do with these numbers. Do not start looking at those numbers and thinking about what you're going to do with them. The first thing you got to do, and you have to trust me on this, is you got to draw the forces. So I'm going to draw the coaster at the top. I'm drawing a really big dot so I can make that apparent. What I know is that as the roller coaster is going through the loop, if I just sort of draw a piece of the track right here, and I draw the roller coaster in really quick. Here's the roller coaster. And sometimes it's really important to just do this, to just draw a physical picture. You realize that the roller coaster is upside down, so you realize that, and this is the actual coaster itself and not a person inside, but everything I'm saying would also be true for the person inside the roller coaster. You realize that the, the coaster's above. Uh, the track is above the coaster, so therefore there's a downward force normal. There's also a downward weight, and I'll label these now. This is force normal. It's from a surface. It's perpendicular to the surface. It's down because the surface is above the roller coaster, and there's force weight. Force weight is always down. Those two forces are both down. That's the key to this entire problem. Now, don't worry about numbers yet we're gonna write down F sub C equals MV squared over R and this is the moment where this becomes important and I keep referring to this which is asking yourself what forces combine to make this particular object move in a circle in the previous in the previous example there's only one force in this example there are several forces there are two forces so I write force weight plus force normal is equal to mv squared over r. So you can see that what I was really doing in this problem, and this is a lot like the f equals ma problems, is I was really looking at this part. I was really asking myself, for this centripetal force, what forces make up the centripetal force? And it was these two forces making up the centripetal force. Now I'll just remind you over here, we have this equation for force weight. It's that force weight is equal to mg. That's really easy to, so in other words, don't be intimidated by the force weight thing. It's really easy to get the force weight. Force weight is equal to mg. So we basically know force weight. You just take the mass times 9.8, the mass being 170. And again, I'm not focusing on the numbers as much as the relationships. Okay, the mass is 170, it's right here. So you just take the mass times 9.8. We basically know all this stuff. So therefore we know force weight. We do not know the normal force, that's what we're being asked for, but we know the mass, we know the velocity. We know the radius, but be careful. The height of the whole loop, be careful as you put this in, okay? The height of the entire loop you are told is 24 meters so therefore we should make note that the radius is 12 meters in this problem a little bit tricky I know but I'm just trying to make it a little bit realistic you would measure a circular loop this this height of the loop you would measure as 24 meters 
So again, remember, uh, I'm going a little bit faster. Remember, you can pause and rewind and, and go through the reasoning again. But we basically know everything. You have to do your algebra correctly. But when you do your algebra correctly, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to do this whole expression. You're going to do this whole expression. And then you're going to end up subtracting the weight from it to solve for this normal force. So you do that algebra out. And you will end up with the answer. I'm looking at my sheet. For number two, you'll end up with a normal force of 175 newtons from the track.